Happy Tuesday, everyone. Meteorologist John Hamanuk with Empire Weather here with your latest agriculture morning briefing. Active morning this morning across parts of the central United States from the plains into the Ohio Valley, and almost all of it is focused on this band of heavy rainfall, which has produced record-breaking rains overnight and into this morning in parts of eastern Missouri and southwestern Illinois. Jumping over to the radar and looking what is, at what is happening this morning, you can see this area of very heavy rainfall. This is all stalled out along a frontal boundary. All these reports are flooding reports here uh, in St. Louis Metro. I'm going to take those off so we can see the radar a bit more clearly. But we still have this band of very heavy rain shifting off to the east. St. Louis reporting record rainfall. Those flash flood warnings continuing and this band is shifting eastward into south central Illinois and Indiana with very heavy rainfall continuing this moisture just pooling along a frontal boundary we've talked about this risk for several days and now we're seeing it manifest itself here in this general region this frontal boundary is expected to continue to be the focus for very heavy rain essentially south of Springfield to about the latitude of Evansville continuing eastward. If we continue to move eastward with this front this morning, you can see it's now spreading into parts of western and northwestern Kentucky. You, here's, here's your rainfall, here's your frontal boundary, and this is very heavy rain. This isn't just uh, light to moderate rain, and it's extending uh, quite a distance. If we, if we want to trace out the actual length of this from top to bottom, we're looking at 100, about 100, 115 mile uh, diameter to this band as it shifts off to the south and east. Going back and checking out uh, the, what the latest forecast models suggest, we can see what the models are suggesting here. They're doing a pretty good job uh, with the orientation of this band this morning. Here's the latest NAM model. And as we move into uh, the mid-morning hours, you, you see the models move it eastward here out of southern Illinois and into Indiana and Kentucky. Uh, the NAM model might actually be a bit too far north with this. Remember, we just looked at the radar and this rain was already down here. So we'll adjust this southward and keep the expectations uh, here as this moves into the early to mid-morning. This is valid now at 12 p.m. And you can see that this banding has shifted off to the east, or east here, out of eastern Illinois, out of, or pardon me, out of eastern Missouri, out of Illinois, and into parts of southern Indiana, southwestern Ohio, uh, and northern Kentucky. Again, with the understanding that this is a bit too far north. This will shift eastward through the day by the time we get into the early afternoon. It's expected that it will be moving into parts of the Appalachians, uh, including parts of uh, maybe the Western Carolinas, uh, Western Virginia, uh, and parts of Southern Ohio, where it will stick around. We're expecting the regeneration of storms in this region later today. The NAM model showing the development of additional storms on this front. So that includes parts of Kentucky, parts of Tennessee, and then the Appalachian Mountain Range will enhance that as well through tonight. We're not done with disturbances though. If we go back and look at the Northern Plains in the upper Midwest, the models are again suggesting this next front is going to bring some storms into this region. So the forecast for these storms has actually changed for the better if you're looking for rainfall in these regions. Let's flip over to the HRRR model and you can see even this model tonight into parts of uh, Wednesday morning suggests we could see some scattered thunderstorm activity. And we spent a lot of time yesterday talking about northwestern Iowa. This region has been very dry, so it would be critical if we could get some of these storms to move into northwestern Iowa. Uh, they're likely going to weaken overnight as they shift off to the east, but if you look at the precipitation totals here, it's very scattered. I'm going to flip over to the NAM, which does a better job with the precipitation. It's scattered. But there is the opportunity for rainfall here in parts of this region as this frontal boundary shifts off to the south. And as you can see these individual storm tracks here uh, into parts of northwestern and north central Iowa overnight tonight. And then obviously here's your very heavy rainfall with the frontal boundary that we discussed earlier. Backing up and looking at the central U.S. as a whole. The storm activity will continue through the week. We have additional storms to talk about here in parts of western Kansas and eastern Colorado. This is valid later tonight into Wednesday morning. This is all that same front, folks. It extends all the way back down here. And so this area, which has been void of rain for quite a while, is going to see some scattered shower and thunderstorm activity into Wednesday morning. Wednesday, we'll see the regeneration of storms along that front again. And we look at forecast models here. Here's your next secondary front and disturbance coming down here on Wednesday night into Thursday. And you can see the models picking up on the possibility of showers and storms in parts of Nebraska, into parts of Iowa. Again, this is not expected to be widespread or very heavy like the stuff we're seeing this morning in this region. But still, it's scattered chances for, for showers and storms moving down through this region 
through Thursday. It will reach these areas here again as we get into Thursday morning. And we're looking at a possibility of another area of heavy rain in parts of eastern Missouri, southern Illinois, and shifting down to southern Indiana and parts of Kentucky and Tennessee as we move into Thursday. So when we take the aggregate of all this and we look at the European models forecast through the weekend, you can see why the, fo the focus of this forecast is on this heavy rain cluster here, which brings the possibility of heavy rain to this area. We've already verified very, very, very impressive rains in this area, but we also have parts of central and western Kansas and eastern Colorado forecast to get several inches of rainfall, uh, and that extends down here into uh, obviously parts of Tennessee western Kentucky as well. The rainfall likely will be more scattered here in the northern plains, but there will be opportunities and the models are not going to pick up on the intricacies of this until we get these storms much closer to developing. Shifting off to the south and east states, we mentioned the Appalachians, right? So when all this rainfall begins to coalesce and move eastward here, the Appalachians can serve as an additional area of lift and you can see that the models are predicting the possibility of enhanced rainfall here as well in parts of eastern Kentucky, West Virginia, um, possibly the western parts of Virginia itself as well uh, as we move into the, the later week and eventually ahead into parts of the weekend. This pattern will eventually calm itself down as we get through the weekend. This final disturbance lifts out of the plains uh, and moves off to the east. This is valid Saturday into Sunday. Um, and that will eventually shift off to the east. And that's when models are showing a substantial pattern change. So here's your very, very wet pattern as we move through the, the end of the week. And we mentioned there will be chances here. It won't be above normal, but there will be chances. This is your focus for storm activity through the end of the week. But look what happens as we move into the early part of August. The models shift that away. And not only do they shift it away, but the monsoon pattern and that moisture, this is a Canadian prairie and northern plains storm track here that's being signaled still on models with this, this drier risk and drier orientation beginning to appear here through parts of the central US into the Midwest which isn't that much of an issue in itself. The problem is that it comes with this widespread warmth, which is being signaled on models as well, with temperatures well above normal for this time of year uh, across a large majority of the Southern Plains into the Midwest. If we look at the upper levels, you can see exactly why the models are doing that. And the reason is that the pattern, we talked about this in our long range video yesterday, so go back and watch that if you haven't yet. Uh, the pattern is changing, we are losing uh, the, the blocking signal that we've had here, which has allowed these troughs to come down and keep the more active flow. We're backing this trough up to the west into the Aleutian Islands. You can see that position here. That allows troughing to redevelop here in the Pacific Northwest and allows the ridge trough pattern, you can see the wave pattern that develops here, favors the expansion of ridging again here across the central United States. And that's exactly what models are showing here. You'll also notice that this ridge is further to the east than what we've seen over the last several weeks. We've seen a, a basic ridge orientation in this general area. Now we're shifting this back to the east. And so this all is to say that the upcoming forecast in early August has some risk to it. It has some risk for this warmth to expand and the storm track to be deflected off to the north. And you can see the models showing exactly that uh, as we move into the first week of August, a generally hotter and drier pattern across a pretty big core of the ag belt with this precip being deflected off to the north. We'll likely see the storm clusters return eventually as we move into uh, the early part of the second week of August. Um, you can see the model sort of hinting at that already here at the end of the ensemble run. But until then, the, f the focus here is going to be that warmth returning uh, as we move into the first week of August and the dryness that's going to come along with it. A lot of sensitivity coming to the forecast pretty much across the entire ag belt in the early part of August. So. We have a lot to talk about today. Your regional videos, your full ag report is on the way, as well as another long range update as we go uh, into a critical time period coming up here. Lots going on with storms today. Stay tuned, we'll have all the details for you uh, as we get through the day today. And obviously if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out, we'll be happy to help. For now, have a wonderful morning, grab some coffee. We'll talk to you guys soon, take care.